The Honourable uh, <laughs> Member of Bay of Quinty. Well, we'll start again, Mr. Madam Speaker. It's an honour and privilege to share my time with the future Prime Minister hey. of Canada. When I was a little boy, my grandfather used to read to me a great Canadian poet, Robert Service. And the, the, the poem that he would read to us was The Cremation of Sam McGee. There were strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold, the Arctic trails of their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights of seeing queer sights, but the queerest they ever saw was the night on the marge of Lake Labarge where I cremated Sam McGee. But the greatest line from that whole poem was a promise made is a debt unpaid. When we said things are broken, Madam Speaker, what's broken the most are the promises to Canadians. Promises for a better life, a way to boost the ability and the affordability of the middle class and those that hope to join it. A promise for a better life in Canada with ample affordable rental and housing. A promise for a good paycheck. A promise for law and order. When we said things are broken, these promises were broken, Madam Speaker. And what was left and what are left are broken promises, which are empty promises, which are leaving Canadians only with empty wallets and the debt that is left unpaid. Canadians deserve better. They deserve the best. And this Liberal government has failed to deliver. It is our duty to effect change and to assure that our hard work in this House today ushers in a better tomorrow for all. The Liberals have stood for far too long with years of hopeful policy that has only led to empty promises and empty wallets for Canadians, especially in the middle class. With more than 8 million Canadians using food banks, it's plain to see that more people than ever before are finding themselves out of the middle class. Rising interest rates are hammering homeowners, renters and businesses as every increase takes more out of Canadians' paychecks and wallets and gives it back to the government. And as a business owner, I can tell you it's hard to watch. Milton Friedman said it best back in 1992, again, over 30 years ago, that although printing money causing deficits as leads to inflation has some immediate benefits that seem desirable in the short term, it can lead to harmful consequences in the long term. The good effects come first. It feels good. The bad effects only come later. There's a strong temptation to overdo it. But when you stop printing money, it's the opposite. The bad effects come first. The good effects only come later. It's hard to reverse, and it's addicting. After promising teeny tiny deficit spending before COVID, before the election in 2015, this government spent $100 billion prior to COVID-19 on deficits. They printed that money. And then after COVID, they printed $200 billion of non-COVID deficit inflationary spending. And then in this budget, after the finance minister promised to get the House in order, they're printing $63 billion in money that is substituted by, well, we're bringing it down to $43 million. Why? Because there's $2,400 of new taxes per middle class income family going back to those households. It's the invisible tax that's taking hold further. Inflation rates that have driven food prices up more than 10 percent. This invisible tax steals from Canadian incomes and it steals from Canadian wallets. Mm -hmm. We know the solution to inflation is to stop printing money and make more of the things that money buys. It creates powerful paychecks by creating more of the stuff that we need in Canada, the things that we are short of. Powerful paychecks that put more money into people's pockets. The complacency of this Liberal government has fostered an environment where our nation's doers and dreamers are forced into a playing field that is anything but level and it is harder than ever to create those paychecks. Companies in Canada find it increasingly difficult to run in Canada because of increasing costs because of inflation, higher interest rates on in their loans and the complete inability to hire talent, workers that they need to make paychecks for their companies. We have red tape. You know, we can't get LNG out of the ground. Our leader talked about this. We need faster building permits. A mine should take two and three years, not 25. Furthermore, we have big, bossy institutions that dominate our marketplaces with rules that protect them, not our small businesses, who again find it hard to grow. Although we have almost 1.2 million small medium enterprises in Canada who make up 98% of all businesses in Canada, who employ 10.5 million people, or 54% of the workforce, monopolies run this country. In the game of monopoly, Canadians lose. 
You know, you pay $200 every time you pass go. Every time you roll the dice, the game of Monopoly, my kids hate this game. You land on TELUS or Rogers or Canada or Via Rail or InBev Beer or RBC or Bell Canada and MasterCard, and every time you lose. No one wins. The simplicity in bringing down prices is that it's about something very simplistic. It's about freedom. Freedom of choice by consumers in a free market dominated not by monopolies, but of a freedom of free and honest competition yeah. of allowing and fostering our small and medium-sized enterprises to grow. Especially the competitive set is anything but that in the Canadian telecommunications sector where Canadians pay the highest cell phone rates on the planet. Wow. Three times higher than the Australians, double what we do in the US and Europe. Is this competition? I think not. The landscape has been game to favor the monopolies leaving consumers without choice. Without competition, these telcos don't have to earn your confidence in your hard dollar, they just demand it. And you pay for it, as some of the highest prices in the world can be found in your bill every single month. And everyone in Canada has a cell phone. The Liberal government campaigned on lower bills and more choices. They said 25% lower. And today those empty provinces come with a significant price. Canadian telephone monopolies have suffocated startups and silent critics. If they can't beat you by only offering the prices they can do, they buy your competitors. They've bought more competitors to take them out of the market than anything else. We must fight for the freedom of choice for Canadians. We must create an environment that breeds competition in a fair and open market. We must fight to ensure that your hard-earned dollar is equal to the affordable and reliable service that we all deserve, because this Liberal pro Party's empty promises just mean empty wallets. It's the same in all sectors. And the solution to see Canadian paychecks grow is to have Canadian businesses grow. Yeah. We need more homes. We need microchips. We need food. We need farms. And we need food processing. We need LNG. It's also about keeping Canadian IP in Canada. Did you know that Canadians invented peanut butter, the zipper, the skidoo, the sea doo the pacemaker, the wonder bra? All these inventions in the past decade, where are they? We dedicated billions in funding to R&D, which gets pilfered by our foes and allies. We've put millions into battery research in the east coast of Dalhousie, but who owns that battery research? Tesla. We put millions into the sidewalk labs at Google, and who owns that research? Google. We're paying still for research from Huawei in our Canadian colleges and universities. Who's paying for that? Canadian taxpayers. Right. Again, we have not been smart at all with where we're putting our investments. And when it comes to looking after Canadians' money, it's all about one thing only. It's about investing in Canadians' futures, and we have not been doing that. Here. Madam Speaker, people with good intentions make promises. It is only people with good character that keep them. Mm -hmm. These are promises made and a debt unpaid, leaving Canadians with the most debt owned by a generation before them. The moral of this story is don't make promises you don't intend to keep. But perhaps the real lesson here is promises made are only as strong as the person who gives them. Mm -hmm. When you cannot trust what someone is saying, you need to turn to a new voice. Mm -hmm. A Conservative government will be that voice, a voice for all Canadians at a time of need. As families struggle to make ends meet and sacrifice daily to put food on the table, the last thing they need are more empty promises. Right. A Conservative government will rise above the unnecessary layers of bureaucracy that have stalled out and bringing about much needed change. Action is what we offer. Yeah. And bringing home paychecks to fill emptying wallets is what Canadians deserve. It's what the future deserves, and this future government will bring it home for Canadians. Yeah. Thank you, Madam